window, I'll go to app, our app.esweb. I read the GDPR agreement, of course. And we create our account. And we get in immediately. Then I'll get an email in the background to set my password and so on later on. But we won't. So window, I'll go to app, our app.esweb. And this is the tool start page. I'll just go create account. Now make sure I have an, an available email at class at login.swings.se. And I read the GDPR agreement, of course. And we create our account. And we get in immediately. Then I'll get an email in the background to set my password and so on later on. But we want to go action first, you know, not this whole ooh type in your email verify and everything. You know, you should get started as soon as possible. So we have some, just some default, my name, class login, some messages, I can select a little icon. So I come in here, I have no site or anything. So the first thing I'll do, I'll create a new site under my sites. And right now we just have a, a blank template that we can create. So let's say we create a, um, a test. Ah, it's gonna be called, actually this is gonna be called Teams meeting site. That's our new site. Let's create that. So let's wire up a copy of this template we have. And it'll just create it and then it'll auto reload to reload the user interface. And I'll get my new site up here. And now I'm in my account section. So I'll swap back to the start page and get into the content mode where the customers are. So I'll make sure I have English, good. This is a translation, Robert, that we'll have to change. Mm -hmm. So by default, I get Cedar, which is pages, which is the default pages, meaning any content at the URL, say my, mypage.com slash URL. Uh, I get a menu from the start, is one. I get a file section where I can upload some simple files and some standard stuff. So the first, uh, actually, we can start by now going, just having this, we can access our eSweb API. So uh, this is a headless system. So all the content is available through a REST API. So coming in here without creating anything, we'll set up an API key for our, our new site or our content hub, really. So creating our key, we get some different keys here. So this will be our endpoint right now. We can, of course, change this later on. We get an OAuth um, client ID and the OAuth secret. We, we prefer uh, OAuth 2, of course. And we also offer some other authorization points like basic auth, etc. cetera. Uh, and immediately I can go and test my API in the API tester. So right now, just to take a look, from the beginning, we got a start page. This start page will contain an empty media content really. So let's see what we can fetch just having this. So in our API tester, we automatically get our values pre-filled because we want to enable the content to be fetched as is, not having a, a big document of documentation. I mean, the content you get, that's the content you create. So of course, we want you to be able to fetch it immediately and see what endpoints or so it uses in here. So the API is based on We'll see this later, but it's based on the, the web paths, really. So slash routes is really mypage.com slash home, you know, just a slash. So our root page, which is test an API call. We got back our page label, start. We have a view key home, and it was created, really, or it's shown as it was created today. No, this is not today. So this was from the copy, actually. Uh, but you'll see this is this start page. So what we'll do now is that we'll set up a new module called news and we'll see how the content fetches from that module. So uh, again, we have the content mode here and this is the studio. So in the studio, we add our back templates, our modules, our we set up the, the content, the, the templates that you can populate with contents. So add module, module name, and use. Let's take this icon. 
we're going to have an article module because we want URLs. We have a key, route path. Some, you can choose some different URL structures, etc. We can select our own paths and so on. We can have landing pages. So we'll go ahead and create that one. Yeah, I'll reload because it doesn't auto add it to the menu. That's the so we get our new section. In the news, we're just going to add a simple view. Standard view, we let's skip any default content. So we create new standard view. And then in, in this view, let's add two text boxes. So we have text box one, text box two. This is going to be called our. Oh. So this is the friendly name for the customer, really. Our first text box. We give that a key so we can access the content later. Say our first text box. It was a bit short. Let's switch to this mode. Our first text box, and this will be our second text box list. Uh, and why I just type list there is because I'm going to take this one and say that we can add a limited amount of text boxes of this kind. So once we set that up, we can head into the the content mode and say, now we want to create a new news. So this is what the, the end customer would really do, the one who owns the site that we have created for them. So we have news one. Our first text box, content text box one. And let's say our second text box. Here you see we got a list. So now we not only got one box, but we have availability to add how many that we want to. So let's say uh, news intro one, news intro two, some other intro, just as an example. We're going to save that. And now let's look at how this will come out from the API. So go into the API again, go to the API tester. As you see, this routes area has been populated now with our new content. So we have our new news route, which is basically this module home, the landing page. We haven't really touched this yet. And we have our news one page, which got this URL slash news slash news dash one. So in the API, we find the route slash news slash news dash one. So you don't have to remember any IDs or stuff like that. It's web native that you reach the content at location where the content is supposed to be. So let's see what we get. We test our API call. We get out our label. We have news one. It has a URL name, the slug. Uh, you get some ID uh, just for having it. And then you see the content we added. So we added a key, our first text box. We can actually put this perhaps on a dual view here. So we added our first text box. And we get that key out here with the content we filled. Content text box one. We get our second text box list, which was this one. Also here, where we get oops, new intro one, new intro two, some other intro. So this is just the basics of the data. Uh, this is a raw meaning you can fetch the content from uh, iPhone app or from um, say some Windows program or whatever kind you like. But normally we build. We build, of course, websites using .NET Core. So I'll take a break here before I show the .NET Framework tools we use to actually build with this stuff and take questions or any thoughts. Go ahead. All right, everyone is on. Then let's continue. OK, so now let's head into Visual Studio. Um, Let's see. So I have a, we have actually, ah, let's start like this. I have a, uh, a repository on GitHub called, Robert can send you this link later probably, but it's called Loyal Game, that's me. And I have a, a repo called EastWeb Site Template Net Core. I just set this up 11 hours ago, just to have a plain basic structure uh, content. I've added a little, a readme on how to start editing, but I'll show you now. So we don't have to read that right now. And uh, let's see, let's clone this. Bam. And I've prepared a small folder here. So let's go git clone. 
so we get a .NET Core template, a solution, um, and some.